Hi, I'm Margaret Martin. Today's tutorial is about understanding bone. We'll discuss the different types of bone and why certain bones are more prone to fracturing than others. The first thing I'd like to cover in regards to understanding bone is the whole remodeling process of bone. And when we talk about bone remodeling, that's the way which our bone replaces itself and stays young. So what happens in our bone is that First of all, we have cells that are called osteoclasts, and osteoclasts are cells that clean bone or cut bone, and these cells have acid that are released to dissolve the current bone that you have. And this, this takes time. It takes about two weeks for the, bone, the osteoclast to settle on the bone and the acid to be released and pits to be formed. What happens then in normal bone is that the osteoblast, we go to the next slide, the osteoblast, these are cells that come in and form new bones. So they actually settle down into the pits that the osteoclast form and they secrete a substance, an osteoid, which then becomes mineralized to fill the cavity and this can take up to three or four months in time. So when your doctor recommends that you don't have a bone mineral density for 18 months, two years, and in some locations they're even recommending three years, it's because the whole process of bone remodeling takes a long time. So in order to replenish the bones in your body, there's this whole process of bone resorption and bone reformation that's happening and it does take a significant amount of time. Now another important thing when it comes to osteoporosis is understanding types of bone and that's what I'd like to look at next. When we look at types of bone, I've brought up a couple of visuals. There are two types of bone that, that are really helpful to understand, to understand why fractures occur in certain parts of our body. We have cortical bone and if you look here on the right and you see this vertebral body, this cortical bone that you see on the outside is a very hard, tough bone. And if you gave your dog a bone, a piece of bone, that is normally a piece of cortical bone from the femur or from the leg bone of a cow. And that's a very hard, tough bone, which is great because we need hard, tough bones. But if we were made just of cortical bone, we would weigh too much. And so the way in which our skeletons are kept light is that the insides of our skeleton, especially of the skeleton in our spine and of the long bones, and over here on the left you see a femur, which is the long bone of your leg. The inside, especially at the neck of the femur, this section here is considered, is called the neck of the femur. And the neck of the femur also has a lot of cancellous bone or trabecular bone. These are, uh, so the, the term trabecular bone, cancellous bone, spongy bone are all used interchangeably to describe the type of bone that's found at the inside of certain bones in your body. Now, why is this so important when it comes to osteoporosis? Is that when we start to lose bone, we'll lose bone at a much higher rate in the trabecular bones in our body than in the cortical bone. And if I go to the next slide, you'll see what bone loss looks like within trabecular bone. So on the bottom left is very healthy trabeculae where in normal circumstances in your body, you won't actually see holes because those holes would be filled with red marrow and yellow marrow. It's very healthy, very alive but you see all of these beautiful trabeculae. So each one of these units is called a trabeculae. You'll have horizontal trabeculae and vertical trabeculae. And these are all of a nice width and you know even size distribution and all depending on how much force you put on your skeleton as you're growing up. Everybody's trabeculae is a little bit different. But as you lose bone, so with osteoporotic bone, not only do the trabeculae become thinner and thinner, but some of them actually disappear. They get reabsorbed through your bloodstream. 
So this is a is quite problematic because with bone, you you know, we're hoping that our skeleton holds us up for our lifetime. But in certain parts of our body, and let's look at what parts of our body have more cortical and trabecular bone, certain parts of our body, especially this um, the spine of, and of the mid-back, so of the, what we call the thoracic spine, this part of our spine has a very high ratio, up to 75% of it is trabecular bone. So when we start losing bone, the, this part of our spine is going to be more at risk for fracturing. And this has a lot of implications in terms of the exercises that you choose and the way in which you move day in and day out and that is going to be covered um, and is definitely um, has been considered very strongly when I've d designed the exercise program so that you don't put your bones at risk for fracture when exercising. So I hope that this has been helpful and that's it for this session. I'll see you next time on Melio Guide.